Residents in that region already forced to make do with so little, many living below the poverty line, now hit with a massive disaster. But there's hope and resilience. I thought we were going to die. I thought that was it. I thought this was our final resting place, and we weren't coming out of this alive. Linda Newell and Percy Johnson, thank God they are standing here today. This truck is where they rode out the EF4 tornado that ravaged their Mississippi home. You could feel the pressure, all of the things that were outside of the truck spinning around, going in and out of the truck, from, front, from side to side, front to back. We felt the truck literally leave off the ground several times, and we started to pray, hoping that uh, the Lord would hear our cry and keep the truck on the ground. And he did that. He did that. So we are truly grateful. But looking at this truck just don't even cover the magnitude of what has happened to our, to our city. Deep in the Delta, the towns of Rolling Fork and Silver City picking up the pieces. Wind and stuff were coming through my house. All I was doing was praising God and thanking him, telling him to save me. And everything's gone. This, this tornado was powerful. It was wide. Homes reduced to rubble. Long haul trucks mangled and carried into neighbors' yards. Bustling businesses gone. The horror began Friday after a violent EF4 tornado ripped through the region. Is there a big tornado, big wet? Winds reaching 170 miles per hour, capturing this acu with their video. Wreaking havoc on the ground for more than an hour, leaving a trail of destruction for nearly 60 miles. In Amory, school surveillance video showing a different tornado ripping through the hallway, debris raining from the ceiling. A local meteorologist praying for those in its path. Oh, man. Dear Jesus, please help them. Amen. The destruction part of at least 15 tornadoes that ripped through four states this weekend, leaving at least 21 people dead, dozens more injured in Mississippi, and another dead in Alabama. These before and after satellite images showing Rolling Fork decimated. Before the storm, Rolling Fork was known for its proudest son, the birthplace of blues legend Muddy Waters. Here, the community is close, with less than 2,000 people, and 35% of the county live below the federal poverty line. Our town has been lacking in a lot of things for a long time anyway. When the tornado hit, the closest rated shelter was 17 miles away. Some say they heard no siren to warn them. It's sad. It's heartbreaking. Children, where are they gonna go? Where are the kids gonna live that's, that's coming up now, that's graduating? It's not about me, I cried for them. It's heartbreaking. Linda and Percy say nobody in their town had time to prepare. When we heard our phones chirp, that's the only signal. They told us we had five minutes. We did not have five minutes. I heard it coming and it was huge. The two have been in the Delta their whole lives. Like many in the community, they live in a mobile home. Of course, you know, when you live in a mobile home and they got bad storms, you, you, you have to leave your house and find a, other residents or others, another safe place. They sheltered inside their truck parked at a car wash, now swept away. We thank God that we're alive because the only structure that held us in place was the last wall of the uh, car wash, the last and final wall. Linda and Percy feel lucky to still have their mobile home. Others, like Irwin Hawkins, have only a suitcase. He was inside this trailer park when the storm hit, hiding under a mattress. I think God uh, wrapped me, put his arm around me, let me know it's all right. He can take everything up, but I'm still here. So I don't worry about no material stuff at all. You know, life is more important. Others grieving those who didn't make it out alive. Among the 21 dead, Ethan Herndon, his wife and two of their children are in the hospital. Their baby daughter didn't survive. 
Wanda Early, she was driving home from her job at a grocery store. And Mary Barfield Bush, a grandmother from Rolling Fork. About 30 miles away from Rolling Fork in Silver City, two-year-old Aubrey died during the storms. Her aunt's standing with ABC's Rob Marciano in front of the wreckage. Like, it's so sad because, like, I'm just standing here and I can just see her at the door smile. It's just so heartbreaking. It's, it's just so shock to even around. Baby Aubrey's eight-year-old cousin badly injured, now fighting for his life in the ICU. Tracy Harden, the owner of a community staple, Chuck's Dairy Bar, survived by taking refuge in the walk-in cooler of her restaurant with her husband and her staff. The lights flickered, and I just hollered, cooler, and my husband opened the cooler door and started shoving us in. The only thing left standing from Chuck's, the cooler they were all sheltered in. Her employees, Barbara Pinkins and Carolyn Washington, were also in the diner that day. And I ran to the bathroom, <laughs> and if that was the longest two or three minutes of my life. I just prayed, prayed, prayed. The team at their beloved local restaurant hoping now to move forward. We want to come back. We want to get back and we need help to get back. Getting back on their feet through the support of one another and the kindness of strangers as well. So here we have baby stuff. And you can see there's chips. There's all types of stuff in here. The United Cajun Navy was also part of the first response team. They're now helping with recovery, but it will take time. Well, we've set up a distribution point, and we're bringing more in every day as needed. FEMA pledging the support of the federal government, and President Biden approving a disaster declaration. When rolling fork bleeds, then everyone in the city and around and about the city bleeds. Percy and Linda say there is one thing that could make a difference for the next tornado. We're just going to have to learn something from this one, but we definitely need storm shelters. Definitely. Until then, they are holding on to the resilience of their hometown. It was just encouraging to see a lot of the people that came back into the community was from here originally. And once they heard about the national disaster here in Rolling Fork, they all came home.